Sometimes you have a large data set that you want to load data into Power BI. For example, data comes from SQL Server with millions of records, sometimes billions of records. Bringing that data into Power BI will make it slower. I'm going to show you a trick that you can use uh, using Power Query parameters to just bring part of the data and then develop the, your Power BI solution faster than publish the Power BI service and change some of the parameter settings so that you get the entire data. Let's jump into this video. I'm Reza Rad. We are going to talk about Power Query parameters to speed up the development of a Power BI solution. Let's assume this scenario. Let's say I have a table in a SQL Server data source in an Azure SQL database that has millions and billions of records. This is accumulated over the years. This is, let's say, 20, 30 years of sales information, orders, log information, things like that. Uh, and I want to analyze that in Power BI in its entirety. I want to bring all of that data into Power BI and start analyzing it. Well, in Power BI Desktop, I can go and say get data from that SQL Server data source and bring that whole data. Now, depending on the connection to the data source, Azure SQL Database is normally faster, but if it is SQL on-prem, it is slower because you have a gateway in between. If it is Oracle data source, again, on-prem, it might be even slower. DB2 data sources, things like that might be slow. And uh, if I want to bring the entire table into Power BI Desktop, and uh, not that Power BI Desktop cannot handle it, the thing is that Power BI Desktop would need time to import that data into Power BI, and that would uh, take a long time sometimes. Sometimes you have to wait for hours for this data to be populated into Power BI so that then you go and build your visualization or build your data model. Sometimes even in the middle of that you realize that you have to do some modification in Power Query. You'll go and apply some changes in Power Query uh, and you have to click on close and apply and each time you click on close and apply this will go and bring all of that data again with the, <coughs> with, the <coughs> sorry, with the new set of transformations. And this would make the speed of development of a Power BI solution or your Power Query solution uh, very slow. Each time you have to wait for hours for this data to be loaded entirely. Now we have incremental refresh in Power BI. I have a separate video about it. That can help, but there is also a, a way that even without incremental refresh setup, using just Power Query parameters, you can speed up this process. And it's a really common way. It's a really good practice that we normally use. And we also suggest our, uh, like every Power BI developer to use as well. Uh, the way that we work with it is using Power Query parameters. Now, I have explained about Power Query parameters in two other videos. I have explained it in custom function video and also in a video that we can change the data source using Power Query parameter. You can go and check those out. In this video particularly, I'm going to show you how we use Power Query parameter to get the smaller portion of data in Power BI Desktop so that we get the data loaded really fast, we get our analysis done really fast. Once we have done this, we publish this solution into Power BI website, we change the parameter value so that we get the entire data or a larger data set. So let me jump into my screen and show this to you. As you can see here, I have a blank Power BI solution. I'm going to get data from a SQL Server data source because I have connected to this before. I have connection saved in my uh, Power BI desktop, but if you connect to a SQL Server data source or any data source, this, is, this method I'm telling you is not limited to a data source type. When you connect to any data source, when you go and see the list of tables, let's say in this case, this is the table that I want. Uh, I'll go and select the table, but instead of loading it here, I'll enable zooming so that you can see it in a much better way. Here it is. Instead of loading it here, which would load the entire data, I'll go to the transform data. 
that way I'll go to modify data or change the way that I would prepare the data or get the data before loading it into Power BI. I'll go to the transform data. Transform data will open Power Query Editor for me. I'm using import mode for this example. Um, it will open Power Query Editor. In Power Query Editor, you won't see the entire data. Power Query Editor always show you a preview of the data, which might be a thousand records, sometimes 200 records, sometimes 100 records, depending on which version of Power Query you use online or in desktop, how many columns you have. It's always a preview set of records. So this is not the entire data. When you get the data into Power Query Editor and it loads fast, you think that Power BI got the entire data. This, did, this is not entire data loaded into Power BI. This is just a small portion of that loaded into Power Query for speeding up your Power Query developments. Once you have done with your Power Query, when you click on close and apply, it is at that moment that Power BI will go and read the entire data from the data source and bring it into Power BI, which might take, take a long time. Now, I don't want to wait a long time for this. This is an action log table. Assume that this has like millions of records. In this case, it doesn't. It's just a sample data. It has only thousands of records, but I want to show you the method regardless. So here I have a timestamp column. Uh, this might be order date, this might be transaction date, a date column that I can use this to be filtered. Now there are different ways I can filter this. I can use a uh, parameter and say I want to only get the last uh, one year of data. I can go to date and time filters and in the date and time filters I can go and say give me the data in the previous and then I can go and choose previous one year something like this. So in the previous, and then I'll go and choose previous one year. And I can type in one. So I'm actually getting one year of data. And this would be a portion of that data, right? Now that one year of data can be parameterized. So I can actually par make this parameterized so that this one is set by a parameter so that I can set it in the Power BI website as well. Or I can do it another way as well, just to show you one other way. Let's say I want to filter this to be everything after a particular uh, year. So what I'll do is from this date and time column, I'll go and add a date year column so that I have the year part of it as a separate column in here, as you can see. And then what I'll do is I'll define a number filter and I say everything that is greater than or equal to, and here I enter 2025. We can, of course, in the M code use something that get the current year's year, but that is not uh, the case for this example. What I want to show you is that we can then parameterize this. So let's say I set this to 2025. Right, so this is only getting uh, whatever data that I have in this current year, which apparently it is 163 rows. Now this um, year, I'm going to make it parametric. So I'll go to the home tab. Here in the home tab, I'll go to manage parameters. I'll go and create a new parameter. Uh, a parameter needs a name that is mandatory. So here I would say uh, year to get data from. And in this case, it's a numeric type. So I'll choose decimal number uh, and I'll put a current value for now. This would be 2025. So these are the three important parts of it. The name of it, the type and the current value. Once I set this, this is my parameter and I can change the parameter value just right here with changing it and pressing it enter. And then I'll go to the query that I had, the action log query in the filtered rows step. This is the step that I want to use now that parameter instead of the actual hard coded value. So I'll click on the setting icon here and this will bring uh, this part that I said is greater than equal 2025 and now you can see there's a drop down here I can go and choose a parameter here and that choose this parameter if I had other parameters I would have gone and selected that 
So I set that and I click on OK. Nothing changes now in here. It's still I have 163 rows because the value of this parameter is 2025. So what I have done, I have created a parameter, Power Query parameter. I used that in the filter criteria of my query and I said get all the data, get the data that the years are greater than or equal to uh, that particular year. Uh, or this could have been a parameter to say I want to have X number of years ago, 10 or 5 or whatever. Then you add other tables in your model. In this case, let's say this is the only table that I wanted to load. Then I say close and apply. I'll just build a really simple visualization that shows me count of rows so that you can see when we apply this change in the website, how this changed. So I'll just bring something like action log ID count. So this is count of action logs IDs, which I would just change this and I would call it count of rows. Now this is my Power BI report. Let's assume I'm going to save this in the, in the download folder or whatever folder that I have in my uh, Power BI uh, repository. Let's say I would put it in, in downloads folder. I'm going to call this um, parameter Power BI speed. I'm going to call this file just like that and it is saved. I'm going to publish this. For this example, I'll just publish to my workspace, uh, keeping things simple. So here it is. This is published now over there, but only with one year of data. The speed of development in Power BI solution in Power BI desktop is really fast because you just have a short amount of data. This doesn't necessarily have to be one year. This could be one month. This could be anything that would give you a small amount of data, but good enough to do your data analytics. So once I have done this, then I'll go to that report in Power BI website. So here is my Power BI website part, which I'm going to search for that uh, Power BI file I just published. Here is my Power BI file. If I look at the Power BI report just now, let's open it in another tab. This should show me that I still have 163. Now what I want to do is I'll go to the semantic model related to this. For the semantic model, you can do things such as schedule refresh, refresh and things like that. But in the settings of that, which you can get to it even with the schedule refresh uh, button, when you get to the setting, in addition to schedule refresh, things like that, uh, let me set my credentials as well here so that we get to connect to this correctly. And privacy level is, let's just call it organizational sign in because it's first time that I published this, so it asks for the credentials. Now, the most important part I want to show you is the parameter section. So here, now you can see that parameter that I have defined is already here. And if I had like five parameters, they have been all here. With the value of it, I can go and change this value. Instead of 2025, let's change it to 2020. Uh, and then apply. So once I apply the parameter, this saves the parameter value. Then I have to just refresh the semantic model. This could have been a manual refresh or I could do this as a scheduled refresh. It doesn't matter how you would refresh this process. That refresh this time would consider the parameter value and get all the, all the records from that time. So I'll go back to my workspace to that semantic model uh, and I'm going to just refresh it manually for now. Uh, this is not a huge amount of data, so it should not take that much time. But if you are working with like billions of records, this might take a long time. So you may actually let it to wait for the next schedule refresh to happen, which still works fine. And that schedule refresh would also consider that parameter. For me, the refresh is done. I'll go to my report. I'll just refresh the report view. And this time I should have 
the entire records. In this case, as I said, it was not millions of billions of records. It was just to show you the parameter usage uh, in Power BI Desktop. So what we have done is the solution, uh, in short, was apply a, our large table. This could be like I want the last five years, last 10 years, last one year, last one month. Or this could be I want all the data from this particular year after things like that or I want only top thousand records any filter that you uh, reduce the number of records the reason for reducing number of records is that you can develop your Power BI solutions faster in the desktop once you have built your Power BI solution faster once you have done all different bits and pieces of modeling of data prep of visualization then you publish that into the website and you go and change that parameter so that you have the entire data. This is a really uh, common approach, a really good practice that you can use. Uh, it doesn't need any particular licensing uh, plan. You can use it even with Pro uh, or any other licenses of Power BI. Power Query parameters has many other benefits as well. You can use them to change the data source or even change the data source type. You can use them to create functions and I have created videos about those. I hope this video helped you in your Power BI solution implementation. I'm Reza Rad. We have weekly videos of, about Power BI and Microsoft Fabric in Radicat YouTube channel. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe into our YouTube channel. Until the next video, bye.